Alright. 5 o'clock p.m. Today is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Make sure your microphones are on because we don't have a cameraman. Um, and this is um, the agenda's regular meeting. This is a special meeting of the Marquette Township Board. Uh, go ahead, Randy. You can do roll call. Okay. Trustee Winslow will be late, so she's excused. Trustee LaRue? Here. Trustee Everson? Here. Trustee Marks? Present. Treasurer Johnson? Here. Clerk Retire is here, and Supervisor Durant? Here. Staff present is Manager Kangas. All right. And we don't have any public. Did we happen to get any emails? We got no. anything from anybody? Okay. Just thought I'd ask. So we need approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Tonight's discussion is about our unanticipated revenue that we've gotten. Now, we talked about this for a while, but we haven't had an at-length discussion as to how to use these funds. This includes the ARPA money as well as the um, marijuana money funding. And we, even though this is a special meeting, we can make a motion tonight. If somebody decides they want to, you know, say something, that's fine. But if we don't, we can carry it over. We can do another work session, special meeting, or we can talk about it at the next board meeting. So there's no pressure to do anything. We just need to have this initial conversation as to how we see these funds being spent. John's got a breakdown. Um, he just handed it out. So this is a lot of the stuff that he and I have talked about this. And, you know, we collectively may not remember that our general fund is subsidizing the road millage as well as our, pol our police, our sheriff funding. But neither one of those millages are covering that, so that's coming out of general fund. So we're kind of short there. So I also handed out priority goals again because these are the things that we're saying that we want to take care of this year. Obviously, if we do the township park uh, across the road, that's a whole other animal, but... Um, Storage is an issue, and that can be at the fire department or not. Um, as far as purchasing things, you know, handicap access, there's not a lot of uh, monetary things here that we wanted to try to accomplish. So add mine to John's, and then whatever else discussion comes up tonight is fine. So this will be open. John, do you want to hit yours? Yeah, so there's one other revenue in here that we probably have not publicly discussed yet, and that's the additional state revenue sharing we've received due to our population increase. And you will actually be getting a budget amendment uh, next Tuesday that covers um, about an additional 90000 in state revenue sharing that is goes back to 2020, actually, so two years of revenue sharing due to the new census numbers, 90000 so call it 45000 a year. That's always nice to see growth, right? Because it helps our revenues. So um, did we get those funds already then? Yes. Okay. They're yeah. already in the bank. Correct. We have got the 90000 already? That's what Kim told me today, yes. We already received that payment. Okay. And so there will be another payment time. of some type end of October. Well, we I think we get quarterly disbursements from the state. So. Right. But this is um, the catch-up one and... Correct. And that's it. Just yep. a one-time catch-up. And technically, it's it's revenue for 2020 and 2021, but it will be additional revenue that goes on the books. And right. You know, we can just put it in the fund balance and pretend I did a really good job managing the budget. But I want you to be aware of these things because it does help us for once. Right. It's not tax tribunal cases decreasing our revenues. It's a good problem to have, but then some of this other new <coughs> revenues isn't going to buy as much as it did two years ago as well, so we also have to be aware of that. We know the uh, handicap uh, automatic door openers are going to cost us about sixteen grand to have installed, plus the cost of an electrician, so let's call it sixteen to 20000 somewhere in that range. Um, we have... If you talk to Pete, we have more road maintenance projects we could be doing than, than we'll ever be able to afford. Although we also know that 
a road millage isn't even covering the, the debt payments. So how much of the general fund do we want to be using to subsidize road maintenance? That's not my decision. It's some of the, some of the issues that have to be resolved here. I can certainly make recommendations. I, I don't recommend funding road maintenance below 50000 a year. Uh, we have it in the budget this year. We just didn't have a project associated with it. Um, you'll recall that a portion of Forestville Road was never done. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on that road here in the very near future. It's possible that there'll be other funding sources to help there, but I don't want to just walk away from our responsibility on that maintenance. So do you want to earmark 150000 in the in the budget to overlay the portion that was never touched? I think it's a good idea. It's not my decision to make. Um, native species along the US 41 corridor, I think it's a great project for the DDA. Um, Lynn and I have been working with the conservation district, and really this again, Lynn deserves all the credit because she's the one that spotted the window of opportunity to get the ball, ball rolling. We're looking at a, a three-tenths of an acre pilot project for native and native <coughs> grasses and flowers um, for the first section of the median east of Commerce Drive, if we can get a permit from MDOT to do it. Um, I have yet to schedule the meeting with their engineer that I need to um, initiate the conversation with, but we're looking at grass seed that would cost somewhere in the $2,000 per acre, and the conservation district would spread it for us. But then what has to happen is we have to mow it for two years once a month so that the weeds don't take over, <coughs> the native species need to take over. That's why we wanted to start with something small just to see how it goes. And that's there just is, like 500 bucks for that, roughly that bag. Yeah, I wouldn't say 500 though because we're talking 2,000 an acre, so take a third of, or three tenths okay. of that. Yeah, she said um, about 500. Okay. Right, because we are looking at a little more expensive mix or a custom mix that may be more, we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. What we have to be careful of there is we want it to look nice, visually pleasing, but not visually distracting. That's what MDOT will be afraid of is distracted drivers because we have these beautiful wildflowers for a mile or two through the township, right? We don't want that. So we got to find the right mix that they're willing to accept to let us try a pilot project if it works. Then we figure out how we fund the other, call it nine, ten acres of the corridor if we did the whole thing from the Best Buy roundabout to the city limits. So. That's one of the other options that's out there. We still have a storage building we need to build. I'm, I'm estimating a half a million to a million dollars, depending on how big you want to build it, right? Uh, half a million might still be actually on the high side, but with construction costs now, it might be a realistic number. This is a spitball number for now. Um, Where was that going to go? Well, that's the issue. We don't really know for sure. It could go on the north end of the property here or it could go behind the fire hall because that would be the primary storage use mm -hmm. is their excess equipment or out of season equipment. We have to get a boundary survey done over there which we've already authorized out of our current uh, operating budget and we're just waiting for it to get done to find out just how much property we have beyond the west edge of the existing parking lot over there. Okay, that's pretty good. John? Uh, I don't. I don't know what when the proper time would be to bring this up in detail, but I don't want us to. I don't want it to escape us that when the roads were improved and everybody was taxed for it, Forestville Road was just like any other road in the township, with same designation. But because there was controversy about when the county might do something, they, they, wanted, they didn't want to tear it up early, and they didn't want to make it look like 
they weren't doing their job. So Forestville Road, we know how much it would cost to bring that up to the same standard as all the other roads. But because we have some thoughts about somebody wanting to have sewage run up that way to a new development, we know that they would tear up Forestville Road when they did that. So we don't want to waste it. But I urge the board to consider a thought that what should have been done at, back two years ago would have been to set that money that we knew that it would take to do Forestville Road up to the entrance to Huron Woods and just set it aside don't don't do anything with it and if you while you're awaiting a decision by a developer if the same thing happens again and the county doesn't do any more than improve the the entrance way from Forestville onto then we 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 would have the money to go ahead and finish the road project because that is a portion of the road project that just wasn't done. It's identified as part of the local network in the millage, correct? Yeah. Yep. So, so what, what I'm suggesting is that early on with some of the monies that we might have, that we set aside that amount just for that and sit back and await the decision of a developer if they're going to make one and if they put it off for another year or two then we're going to have to we're going to have to spend it on forest Hill. but I, I'm, I'm more than willing but i just think we ought to squirrel it away and if they do decide to run a drain up there, then we can use that money for it can go back to the general fund. Or we can help put the road back together in a better fashion than it currently is. is. Than it currently yeah. And that's I think I'm urging the, the board to consider when you're looking at this bucket of unallocated funds that we take a piece of that. I think it's what a hundred and 150000 is okay. what the engineers estimated okay. for us. Just set that aside. I'm, I'm not saying spend it. But set it aside specifically to do force. I'm total agreement with you. Until we hear a decision on what's going on that direction, we just we got to wait and see. Because, um, yeah, there, well, not only that road, like in the county, road commission meeting the other night we have to think about the big picture because if that big development happens out there that just might be a band-aid for a few years until we get a better road situation there. Pam? I had uh, actually two questions one yeah what was what is being said about development out there and two I know we discussed it very briefly about Forestville Road Right near the intersection, um, what what is being discussed about <coughs> the springs and the water and stuff under the road right there? That I mean, is that in that budget to take care of those? I mean, no. Nope. So the one hundred fifty is a maintenance overlay period. It's not a reconstruct. That being said, if if we ultimately see this development occur that's on the radar but nothing's submitted officially yet um, some of that may have to be addressed how much of it can be done is really dependent on all of the details that happen between now and then and there's a lot in the works um, I'll tell you about it as soon as I I'm at liberty to tell you about it we know there's development pressure along Forestville Road that 
is going to put significant pressure on the existing road network to the point that we probably need to complement it with additional options. What it looks like, it's too early to tell. So, um, great opportunities come with big challenges, right? Um, this would be a PUD type of development, so there's a lot that has to happen to make, make this project feasible. Um, there's actually corporate limits with the city that get involved, meaning a public act 425 agreement between the two jurisdictions, which is actually um, a possibility based on preliminary conversations we've had with them, something that should be seen as a good thing when you look at our history. Um, going back to the, the days of the former city manager when, when we almost lost our water supply and, and all that, um, let's just say that hatchet right now has been buried and we're in a much better working relationship with our neighbor and I think the opportunities are very good um, if all of the other hurdles especially with this development are addressed properly so all the more reason to not do anything but rat hole that money and put, put aside what we can what we feel that we can afford to put aside for that project and you know and go on to other projects I, I think that's exactly what Pete would like to hear if if he knows that we're setting money aside from revenues that we haven't planned on so that he can take the revenues that we had historically been budgeting for the road committee to allocate to annual projects he'd probably get off of my back can we just can we do we have to earmark that specifically for Forestville or could we just earmark it for the road improvements well, it's general fund revenue, so you can earmark it however you want to, as long as we keep track of it and know that it's in a savings account specifically addressed for road <coughs> improvements, however you want to define it. I would, I would personally like to see that. You know, then, then it's not specifically earmarked for one project, and and if if all the ducks line up in a row and. We can take them all with one shot and we get Forestville all redone with the projects going on, then we have the money for other road projects. I, I think you almost have to refer to it in terms of the phase one of the RFP process that the Road Commission is currently going through. The draft is out for review right now. They're looking for consultants to help them figure out what they need to do. This is turning into a potentially big project very quickly. So um, a lot of challenges that have to be resolved for some of this long-term stuff to happen. There's some well, beautiful acreage down that way, and I'd certainly like to see that develop for sure. I mean, there's just potential is unlimited. Think about the two, I mean, of the 300,000 that's unallocated, two something is next year so uh, we will receive our second res we will receive our second tranche of ARPA money later this year oh okay that's 200 and what 240 uh, or 240 250 50? no not that much we we received half of our 406,000 so it'll be oh. about 203 something okay. like that so even then you know if we don't even consider that we don't have to worry we know what we have to spend now is what we can talk about. That might be the easier way. I don't think I want to totally put the money in the bank and say a general road project because Forestville hasn't been done That's where true. the rest of it has. So it wouldn't be fair to take, I mean, even though it's all coming out of the general fund and we're subsidizing the maintenance, that's not maintenance. That's the first level. Well, the reason I was, needs to be the reason I was saying that is because then if the Forestville project gets done, then we can still use that for other projects in the road, to do with roads. Yeah, if we want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Lynn? Sir? Uh, I think that the Forestville Road is very important for a project for the township. You know, because there are lots of things that with Forestville Road 
I don't know why the, town, the county didn't correct a lot of it because even with the drainage coming down that hill, it's blocking the drain, uh, uh, the one drain before you get to the intersection, and then all the sand is going right around and blocking that drain on, around the corner there. But it's long overdue, but uh, the money, we can't reconstruct it with the money that was designated for paving the road. Right. You have to figure out how much it would have cost for the black topping of that road, and that's how much should be set aside. John? I, I agree with 100% what Pete just said. But oh. let's all remember, if you look at the bottom of the memo I left you on the table, the road millage isn't even making all of our de annual debt payments. So whatever we spend on road maintenance is no longer road millage money. It's general fund subsidy. Mm -hmm. So you can commit to an annual number for road maintenance, and that's a good idea because we don't want to walk away from the investment <coughs> we already made. I just think it's also important to finish the investment we made, and that happens to be one of one of the visible ones that I'm aware of that was never done. With the one and a half uh, millage for road maintenance, whatever that amount is, you do X amount of roads. If you can't get them all, then you'd only do a part portion of them, and then next year you pick up. Well, that one and a half mills is paying for the debt yeah. that we took out to do the big project. Yeah, yeah. it's only making all debt we're payments. Paying, all we're that, doing is the, the debt. debt should not be paid out of that thing. It's for road maintenance. No. So then how do they make the debt payments? No, we have to pay that. That's, that's Read the damn thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, read it, what it's designed for. But you have to pay the bill first. That's not that part of that part of the uh, millage. We voted on for maintenance for that. We didn't vote on the debt. And it was all discussed way before that. We had the 18 meetings here, and that's what we discussed. If we find mm -hmm. another way to pay for the debt, then we can use all of the millage on maintenance, but you better find a new way to pay for the debt first. Yeah. The idea was, you know, when we were, had 7% increase that those first few years, it, it was covering both. Mm -hmm. But Forestville Road is long overdue, you know, it just, it's terrible. We, we owe it to those people that live up there yeah. to finish it. Yes, but that would be, we have an imminent project right yeah. now waiting, like, we could have answers, what, it, in a couple months? So we met with them out? in a pre-application meeting this week. Who's them? The principal. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the developer. All right. Potential developer. I thought you meant road commission. Sorry. The road commission was there too. Okay. So everyone understands what's going on and quite honestly there's a lot more people involved than the township and, and the developer and the road commission at this point because of the potential significant improvements needed. That intersection is already technically a failed level of service. Right. And the county does, has no options right now. Just strictly what Jim said at the meeting. They, Correct. They're trying to figure out what to, what to do with it and they don't know yet. Right. So there's much bigger powers than me working on significant solutions that would be very beneficial to all of us if we can make this all work. Like I said, a lot of challenges. Nothing's a slam dunk at this point. We'll work it out. Okay, so what if we say this? What if we say of of the three hundred that's unaccounted for yet or, or unallocated, we figure a hundred thousand of that it's gonna be the end of the year sometime, you know, or later. And fifty thousand that we would normally use for the roads this year, just don't spend that money and talk about what we can do with what's left and just get the road thing out of the way. Okay, so... And we should know and then in a few months, maybe by the time we get this other 200000 whether we have a viable project and then we can take it back and then figure out what other road maintenance we want to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Go ahead, John. I've got to tell you that I've had deep thoughts about the people who were in control of what roads would be worked on two years ago. And they did not want to work on Forestville. They left that go. 
All I'm asking is squirrel away. Well, that's what I just said. No. I did. No, I don't want to squirrel away where we're a past member of the road commission is still in control of where that's going to go. I don't want that. I want, I would like the township to go on record for the people in Huron Woods that have been paying the taxes and never got the front of their road paid like the front of Pete's road. I want, it, I want them to know that at least Forestville is going to have enough money squirreled away to take care of it <coughs> if the county and the other people involved don't tear it up for another reason. I'm not saying spend it. Just set it aside. Well, that's what I just said. Yeah. Well, that's what, yeah. Take 100000 yeah. No, 100 and, it's 150000 Yeah, something. I know. Take 100000 out of our money that we're going to yep. get for the second installment of ARPA and the 50000 that yes. we would normally do on our road maintenance this year and not spend that. Is it, is it squirreled away with the title? Right, I can't talk right now. No. In a, in a meeting. But by the time it's right. we decide this, we may know if we have a project. We probably only need a couple months, right? We'll certainly know better. Um, once we receive a formal application from the developer, we don't um, have the hundred and three or six thousand or whatever it is yet. Anyway, actually, we do because <laughs> no, this year might. If it was next year, we have fifty thousand dollars in this year's road maintenance budget yes. with no project plan. Right. Because we started this conversation That's what last I said. year. Set that aside. So there's fifty. Okay. Yep. I I'm agree. talking about the three hundred thousand. It's un unaccounted for yet. Take a hundred of that that we don't have yet. Oh, well, that's fine. And just yeah, we not won't be talk doing a project about it before we get it. Right. Okay. Right. And then you've got your hundred and fifty, and we're not going to spend the fifty from the budget this year. We don't have the hundred thousand yet anyway. So by the time we get it, we may know if this project is viable. And if it is, it's going to cover the road more than likely. Yeah. And um, we can take that 150 back. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. So if we just, for this purposes of this discussion, if we can say the road force bill is right off the off the docket for right now, that would be an easier way to figure out how to go forward. Okay. For the purposes of this meeting, nobody's got to decide anything <coughs> tonight. But we need to kind of think about the rest of this money and the other projects that are viable. We've got CIP things that that need to be considered, or the one or two um, strategic planning things we want to do. And if we decide, you know, in the next hour, we don't even want to do any of those, then fine. But we need to at least discuss them and see how important the rest of these are. I think John can take back the consensus of the board that that we are we want to move forward and get that project Absolutely. taken care of within the next two years. I would think years. that's true, yes. We may be able I think to that do is that the consensus next spring. Of, of most of us, anyhow. But here on Hills, they were, they did get maintenance in the last couple of years, but on, we didn't do Forestville Road. They got maintenance on their on their subdivision. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was a chip seal. Yep. yep. That's what we all got. Yeah. Except Forestville. That's except the discussion. Forestville. Yeah. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Linda? So, so, you know, this is very confusing because you're going this way and then somebody's going this way and someone's going that way. So, we, in my mind, we need a budget that says 2020 slash 21 has $5,000 for roads. It's not going to get spent this year. When does this budget end? When did, where's that five fifty thousand dollars that you're telling me for roads? When does that end? Twelve thirty one twenty two. So, so in twenty two, you have fifty thousand dollars that you're not going to spend. That's what you're saying to me right now, right? As yes. At this yes, point, right now. Yes. Yes. So, as so there. Today. So, to the public, you're saying we're gonna, we're not going to fix any roads this year. We're going to save that money for a future project, right? Then you have Wrong. in two thousand twenty three, you have a hundred thousand dollars you are going to get that you're going to put in roads from. 
ARPA money. We'll receive the money later this year. Oh, okay, but it's going to be in the 2023 budget. And yeah. that's a suggestion. It'll, it's not budgeted okay, for that. Okay, so, but... It'll be budget, put into this budget as a budget amendment. Sorry, so, I don't so mean to interrupt. Yeah, you just need to make this so it's easy to read. So then what I'm hearing is we still have $200,000 that we're not doing anything with. From the ARPA money. From the ARPA money, and 56000 from the marijuana money. Right. So what's the most important project here? That's what I'm trying to figure which, out. Which, which, yep. what's important? Which, if we look at this, yes. we decided yep. the most important project was sell the acreage. Well, that's not really a project for money. No, that's why I said okay. there's only really a couple so things. So then here. acquire land, that's important. But the doors are important, and we didn't fund the doors. No, but he did give us a number of 16000 that. Okay. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay. And then consider expanding touchless surfaces. What does that mean? So, so, so we need some, we, if we want to do that, we need some uh, money, mm -hmm. amount. How much is it? That's the only thing I see on here. Until we yeah, update the CIP, right? Well, where, yeah. Because where the are the CIP projects? <laughs> Because the park um, is something we can't really worry about yet. Well, you can set aside money for a park because it says acquire. So how much money have we already spent on acquiring a park? We have spent money. Staff okay. time. Staff time. That's money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, other than that, we didn't decide on any other priorities here. We didn't. We didn't. So at this point, uh, I see fix the doors. And the only other thing that I see, or <laughs> that I know that we talked about, which again will be a fall thing, is um, if they don't get the grant for the new ambulance, right? Yeah, that'll be a top priority. So you won't even look at that till September. Yeah. So actually, what we're doing is we're putting money in a holding, just like you do in your home budgets. Maybe some do, some of us don't, and we wing it. But what I say is, all you fund today is what we put here, the doors. Well, maybe we take that out of the marijuana money. I mean, it's all in a pot. It doesn't... Mm. Well, no, <laughs> part of the pot. <laughs> that's a, that's oh. a yeah. Well, you know, the marijuana money, I, I have to say this. The marijuana money came to us because we have a store open. That store, if you ask people could increase our use of police. It certainly is upset, you know, we're using upset and that, store, that money's coming back and maybe that's where that money should be spent. On the police, which we're like under, way paying. under, yes. Well, that's kind of sad. Yeah. We're not under, we're not underfunding it, the mill is just only covers. Right, and so the money. general fund is funding it, but you yep. know, if you think about why you have drug money, marijuana's drug money, you know what, that really should be used for education and prevention and supportive services needed. Really, if you start spending it on other stuff, what are you going to do when you don't get it? That's yeah. what the county should be doing. It'll be left. But they're not doing that. So and should they should, need. well, they should also be fixing the roads. <coughs> I pay county millage so they can fix the roads. And huh. look at how nice we've been. <laughs> no. Maybe too nice. No, we don't have a county road millage. We pay the county money. It's their responsibility to do the roads. We do through the Gas yes. taxes and stuff. But we pay them, yes. and their county roads, they are not ours. Right. Very and cool. so we have helped the county. Well, However we look at it, yeah, we, we and every them. other township in this area. And they depend on that now. And they don't have enough money. Well, so but you we see, they the need to go somewhere else. They need to go to the government and now say, why don't we have enough they money? They have been. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, in my mind... You can, I can change my mind. You can help me change my mind. Yep. I see the doors. Let's get the doors done. And the touch We're ready services. to bring that to you next Tuesday. Did, do you have, <laughs> right. take it from. <laughs> any discussion then? Do you have anything on the touchless services? Because he did mention that before. I don't have prices. Tell me what they are. It's like the sinks. You don't turn the you water on. You just put your hand under the Motion oh, sensor. Yeah. yeah. Bosses. I don't think that's going to be more than a couple thousand dollars. Probably. Or you can use paddles in the old days. We used well, paddles. when you add up the number of fixtures we have in the entire building, it'll it's add more, up pretty quick. Yeah. Maybe more, we have too many. Thousand. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Ernie. Okay, I'm, I'm listening to everything. In that, and I'm, I'm right down to the other considerations. And you look through that, the general fund is 
subsidizing road millage by 131,000, that's for debt retirement. And law enforcement subsidizing 106,000. That's $230,000 that the general fund is subsidizing those two activities in that. So, and uh, I have no problem allocating on the 300,000, 100,000, set that aside, and $50,000 for uh, uh, road. But the question I have now is what are we going to do on roads this year? Are we going to have any dollars available? to do anything with the roads anywhere in the town. Not if we take that 50 and, and earmark it for Forest Bill Road. And remember, we talked about this last yeah. year already. We needed time anyway to get our new staff planner trained on the software and the road ratings. Because he came in with a different skill set than what we had before. And we knew it when we hired him. So we knew we had to train him. He's, he's there now. And the road commission is re-rating the entire local network this right, year. This so we're going to get a complete new set of data to work with over the fall and winter to put a project together next year. And honestly, Pete, I think this is the best solution because I was thinking we were going to have to budget that other 100000 for Forestville Road next year. Yeah. And we wouldn't do another maintenance project other than that because an overlay is a, is a maintenance project. That's what we did in Trowbridge. We right. overlaid all the roads, right? Right. So 150,000 gets that last leg of Forest Hill Road, but we don't want to do it before we know if it's going to get tore up or not. We don't want to tear it up and then. Correct. Right. It would be a waste of money the way government is so known to do. And if we do end up waiting till next year, then we'll have another 50,000 to add to that pot. Too. Well, next year the, that 50,000 has to have a project to go with That's it. what I'm saying. Because if we don't right. have to use the 150, We've got another or another fifty from next year. Then now we got two hundred thousand to put toward maintenance. Yeah, but that fifty should be next year's project, and maybe the budget can accommodate seventy-five thousand for road maintenance next year because we shrunk that number to fifty for prior years. I think we had gotten up to sixty-seven two years ago. That was my first year here, um, and I wasn't in this position yet. Um, there's a lot of juggling that has to happen in the budget process, and ultimately at the end of the year, if you don't have enough revenues to cover your basic services, it comes out of these optional things, right? That's the first thing you have to cut. So I'd love to see that number be bumped back up to 75000 next year, and if we know we can count on some of these new sources as consistent, yeah. we can show them in the revenue, it'll help cover the increase in cost, and you might even approve it in November. So that's part of the new budget cycle. Go ahead. The marijuana revenue, that's a big question mark, because if the Federals get involved with it, we lose all of that. We won't get it anymore. Yeah. And that's the way they got it set up. In that. They decide to legalize it. So That's just a gift. That's a gift this year. Don't count on it ever. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's one time because yeah. we don't know what the federal government's going to do. Well, it's for well, last it's year, so that. we may get this year's, and that would be it. Well, we never know what the federal government's going to do. Mm -hmm. They right. don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> they don't even know what they're going to do. Well, they don't know. Yeah. yeah. The other it's one like, is yeah. it, uh, additional revenue sharing. We got 90000 which means our revenue sharing is going to go up each well, year. Half of that. Mm -hmm. Half of that 000. per year now. So that dollars will be coming into us in that. And then they might ask for it back if we lose residents in the next census. <laughs> well, we got I'm nine not worried about years. the next census. <laughs> well, we got nine more years. Some of us are, right? The good news <laughs> is the state has been holding communities harmless that lose Did population. they hold them harmless? They did. Uh, I bet they yelled loud. Well, another advantage, too, is waiting until next year to get that. And I think that's a good idea because if you have a good plan in place for next year, I think the pricing might be better too. Because right now, oil is $110 a barrel, which Yikes. relates to asphalt being mm -hmm. real high. Yeah, $450 for gas today. Yeah, believe so it. <laughs> if you know when the oil comes down, which it will, the asphalt price will come down also. So this is just a bad time for road construction, unfortunately. And maybe it's just as just well a bad it time. Ready. Well, actually, every all construction, it's a bad time. Every, we're at the top of the price range right now for everything. Mm -hmm. So, what so, we, so what, maybe we should just, well, I, I don't have a problem with the doors, but any other projects, 
maybe we should just wait a year and let the prices come down so we don't, you know, I don't want to pay top price for, or double the price for what, you know. Well, project-wise, the roads is really all we're talking about as yeah. so a major and, and, project. And like you'd said, like everyone here agrees on, put the money aside, see what's going to happen, and then move forward. If it's not going to happen, then we can go ahead with that project next year and do it. Let's look at storage. And that's Yeah, that is. You know, something like that, that it's not going to be increased or not by the price of oil and that. Yeah, but by, main, by, by building construction, construction is, building yeah, construction what you're going to do. materials are way expensive, way, way, way expensive. It's right going to take us a year or two to get plans designed and permitted anyway. Um, we may know more by the end of this year whether or not we can proceed with a project like that. We might find that the general fund is in a good enough position to help pay for something like that because of savings that we've recognized over the COVID years. We but don't know. The webinar, the some of it I heard today, it wasn't a webinar, it was an actual discussion with the Michigan um, Towns and Townships Association. And remember, I didn't get to listen to the fire side of it, but with the rest of the rural development, they have, they're putting up, um, I wrote some of them down, they're putting up firehouses, they're buying fire trucks, um, they're running around a two and a quarter, 2.18% interest. They're doing turnout gear, they're doing storage facilities, they're doing any kind of EMT uh, equipment, um, ambulances, they're doing the, um, what do you call them, the lifts, the, the bed things that they put oh, in the ambulances. Yeah, instead of the, instead of the staff lifting, everything. auto lifts. And they have, I forget how many millions or a billion dollars um, of grants money available and what a lot of the communities are doing he said is partnering up they're doing a loan and they're doing a grant and they have lots of grant money together so maybe and I took the website down and then I had to go <laughs> I didn't get to finish the whole thing but I'm sure I can get back on and get the information so that might be something to explore before we get too far into a building because we may be able to get a nice low loan Low interest loan, 2.18 right now is just unbelievable because they're it's, always shooting it's up. It's still shooting up. Yeah. yeah. And then get a grant besides. And what he, his comparisons, and he had people on, there were 78 attendees from all over the country, actually. It wasn't just Michigan, but um, they were presenting for different ideas. And they, um, they, had, they were showing the names on the top of the communities that had the fire trucks and that had the buildings, the storage buildings, and they listed all the stuff from the storage buildings that you could get. Um, so let me get some more information on that before you guys have your discussion too about the building. So if we decide we want to put that on the back burner for right now and not worry about that discussion, at least we have some more information, that might not hurt. But it is needed. Yes. But so it would hurt to, absolutely. to at least maybe get some plans yes. drawn up and be ready. That won't get, hurt. Get yeah. the permit, you know, to get the, the, bleh, get the um, land over there surveyed and see what we, if it's, if it's feasible there, if it's feasible here, and then get the plans drawn up for either site. Do we have a good feeling for that, John, on um, square foot? You talked about that before. Pete's in the way, sorry. Uh, Dan like, had a number that he thought he needed, and if I remember it. right, it was... No, I better not say it. That's okay. So so he's got an idea of what he needs, right? Yep. Do we have an idea of what we need? Yeah, we take okay. the, uh, the right, size of one of the storage units we're currently renting and multiply it by three so that you have, you have room. At least that. So, so we should probably do it times We're renting four. two units. Okay, I thought if, it was three. If we provide space for three and do proper shelving in there, we'll be able to fit as much as we would currently fit in four storage units. Okay. Because those storage units only have shelving along the walls, I believe, not down the middle. Okay. So So we do know when it comes time to do, once we have the survey done, <coughs> we can actually do some kind of plans because we know how many square foot we need. 
Just a question, Lynn, is do we have enough property there? I know we have it here. It's just whether or not they yep. have enough yeah. over there. Yeah, so that's step thing. one, and it's in the works. The okay. survey is authorized. Um, we just need to wait for that to happen. In fact, Dan was supposed to check with the surveyor on schedule here sometime this week. So I don't know how quickly it'll happen. I'm sure the surveyors are just as busy as all the other consultants right sure. now. Hmm. But that gives us still, if you take 100000 and allocate that out of that, it still gives us $346,000 set in there that uh, we yeah, have to... And so it'll be good to see what the CIP... Well, remember, we already spent 100000 of that yeah, on that hydro ex excavator. Yeah, you're spent saying it's so we, Yeah, so 300000 That came out of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Because it was 400000 yeah, yeah, so we we spent first. just under half of the first tranche of ARPA funds on the hydro excavation. But I'm going by what you have here. It's 300000 That's what we have left. That's what we have left. We've got 346000 left, left available to us to make some decisions on. Correct. Plus 56000 plus 90000 No, he added those included. in. You I added know. all those together? Yeah. Yeah. Overall, it was 446000 and we're taking 100000 and allocating it to the roads for the future. Oh, right. Yeah. So now we're down to 346 in that. And that's still a lot of money. It is. But you're going to wait till September to see if the grant is funded for the ambulance, and if not, that's another hundred thousand out of it. Oh, it'll be more than hundred thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand for the ambulance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, then you just have to wait till September to make some more decisions. <laughs> However, um, there's uh, enough money to do the doors. <laughs> At this yeah. conference I was at, RD is have long-term yeah. loans for like 1.25 percent interest, some long 40-year loans. But these are huge amounts. So. But RD is a good funding source too. But those are things we have to look at. Uh, now, uh, the was it the wastewater or public works? We're looking at two million dollars. That they got a grant, or trying to get the grant for? I think it was three million. Three million. And uh, Lenny and I have been sitting in on the Great Lakes Water Infrastructure Conference the last two days. One of the one of the sessions today actually specifically addressed. Um, there's this new law that was passed a few weeks ago that commits another 1.9 billion to infrastructure. That's giving us some confidence to keep our fingers crossed. We didn't give up on uncrossing our fingers yet, that we might get grant money to do it. If they come back to us and say, we're only going to give you loan money, we may be better off self-funding the, these projects with our cash reserves. Um, and we may just have to do it in a different fashion, meaning we can't do everything all at once. The other thing to keep in the back of your mind, and I don't remember the year, John, is the balloon payments that are coming up. Um, fire department. This building. And this building. Yeah. Oh, yes. They were seven year balloons, I think, and this is, we've got like three years left. Yeah, I don't remember Something what the date like was. Dulcie so was actually keep that in the today back and I forgot mind. to ask her about it. I think, it's, I think it's well worth looking at refinancing that yeah. right now. I think I said that roll it. a year ago. Yeah, just roll it, yeah. If I we can, if we can, I think that's looking at it if we can. I would have loved to have done everything you've asked me to do in the time I've been here by now. But there's only so much time in a day. But even then, that's why we oh, have to have on. these discussions. We need to talk about them and have a plan ahead of time. And it's too hard to do that at a board meeting. Yeah, so it's not enough time. These there. kinds of meetings are invaluable. <laughs> and we got a lot out of just this one. We have direction for the next couple months. I think John should start stating at least until 8 or 9 o'clock. <laughs> well, then put it better with her. They got, you know, I can stay till 8. I'm just not getting here till noon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't even stay till 9 for that. <laughs> Sometimes that's more productive. Okay, so we kind of decided we could do go ahead and do the doors, right? Which we were planning to bring to you next Tuesday anyway. We've got three prices Good on that. Numbers. Okay. So, so then, then one after that would be the touchless bathrooms or, you know. Yep, and we can put staff on getting prices for that as well. Um, we're, we're talking local plumbing contractors that would do that work. Uh, we would just have to get quotes from is, you know, at least a few reputable contractors that we know we would 
be willing to let work on our our uh, plumbing. So are you then, it just this building or wherever there are sinks? You'll see I've got 12 of them. It's a good point. We because should probably do it in all sense. three buildings. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but then we can share the cost too. Yeah. <laughs> Split it up three ways. Yeah, I'm not sure Dan's going to volunteer to do ways. that, but we'll see how that goes. Well, certainly what the EMS is yeah. should be. I don't disagree, but... Well, and maybe we take that out of this money. If he doesn't have to pay for it, it'll be a lot easier for him to manage his budget. Okay. Yeah. So, well, yes. innovative. But until we get a price, we don't really know. We're kind of shooting in the dark right now. Yeah. Not too so. Well, we'll get going on it. Yeah, faucets yeah. are. All right. Three so what do you three. think about the um, Linda's idea of just putting all of that marijuana money, just leave it in the general fund and put it toward the police department, the sheriff? Or I guess you could split it up, send it upset a couple thousand dollars too, because we know that they're going to be... We already gave them. Can't I know. We, can't we, we just give them, give them 10, that 000. money? 10, I know. Can't we put like ten thousand back in our budget, and that's where that we money do comes that from too. annually? Yeah. I, I mean, that is what. I mean, if you didn't have the drug problem, you wouldn't have upset. You wouldn't have that bill. So here's someone's giving you. You can call it drug well, money back. We can yeah. fund upset for the next five years at ten thousand a year. If we get <laughs> yeah, I mean, there really, every year you get the money from marijuana. You look well. At, well, they're not but it's funds. it's gonna it yeah, starts here, but it, over time it's gonna. Yeah. Well, yes, and you don't know if you're gonna have more than one facility. I mean, you have yeah. to reevaluate it every year. I wouldn't commit to putting fifty thousand yeah. away and giving them ten thousand a year. No, but that would be. I, I do think as I think that's somewhat progressive as a township to say that we're taking this money and giving it back to. The only reason we have this money. I don't. I don't agree with you, but I have to run. I apologize. Okay, Peter. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's lots of things you can spend money on, but again, we don't know what the CIP requests are. And maybe some of them will be small enough to use some of that money. I, I mean, really, what, yeah. can we buy basketballs or pickleball nets or I don't know. I yeah. mean, you know, things that, things that people can see are important. It isn't always about a road I can't see in Forestville that costs me lots and lots of money versus a baseball field or a park that lots of people can use and cost lots less money. So think about your whole thing here is increase your community involvement kind of thing. You know, what do people well, look for? We could divide the, the spoils up and just send everybody a check. Well, I don't think you can do that legally. <laughs> no. I think you can with yeah. ARPA money. Yeah, you can, can with ARPA yeah. money. Well, yeah. the other thing the is, um, already done it. you know, we have a, we have, um, Across the country, if you listen to some things, there is an issue with staffing your volunteer fire departments. There's a huge issue. Um, huge. And I can tell you young people, and not us, but young people, they're not going to go over there for $15, $17 an hour. And you're going to have to pay more money. And people are not going into policing. So what do you think is going to happen to all that? We're going to be paying higher salaries or we're not going to have people. I, I only know the police thing because the, the, we're giving scholarships out next Tuesday. Not one student indicated they wanted to go into police work. Not one. Or why? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I said, too. Like, big surprise. Yeah, really. Yeah. So kudos to our fire department who has an intern. Really? They've been, they've been pretty <laughs> lucky right now that they're having some younger people getting involved also and in going to the firefighter one or two training because that's a huge commitment. And it's huge. They, they're, getting, they're getting some younger, haven't seen this in years, but they are getting some younger people involved now. But it's going to cost, those things are going to cost us more money as communities. Well, Ernie, and Ernie knows how important it is to have those EMS people. Yeah. We all disagree with it until we have to use it. Well, our neighbors to the east right now have a full-time police and full-time firefighter that they can't fill. Cause yeah, people aren't yeah. applying for those yeah, jobs. No. You know what? I'm not going to go work for fifty, sixty thousand 60000 when I can it work from even, home for 100000 Yeah, that's true, but it isn't even just the money. When you have that unfunding that they're trying to do all across the country... Oh, yeah, the police And nobody respects right. them anymore, so right. they have no authority to do anything. And if they do it, they get 
Yeah. And yeah, five minutes later, they're back out on the street anyway. So right. it isn't even just the money. It's the whole it's the conceptual. Yeah. It's well, the it's, system that's yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think, you know, there are places for our money to be spent. And here's the positive note. When somebody sells the house for $450,000 in my neighborhood, their taxes are going away. Yeah. My neighborhood. I like that. They uncap it. <laughs> yeah. My Un neighborhood. Yeah. So let's like think about. So look at your neighborhoods and think what that house next door could be selling for in their taxes. Well, for now, until price prices come down, yeah, or interest rates. But it's still, it's definitely They're still not, borrowing. It's not yeah. a buyer's market, that's for sure. Yeah. So, but getting so, back to this here, I think Linda brought up a good point. We could take out of that marijuana money, fifty-six thousand. We get ten thousand, and just set that aside. So we don't have to take out a general fund. If that's where we want to go each year, $10,000 there. That would cover so, next year. Uh, we right. don't have to worry about that in the general fund. Right. That makes the most sense. Well, but we may get some money next year, too. We've already, like she said, we've already paid them this year. Yeah. We, we know we're going to get some marijuana money next year because it'll be for this year. So we already know we're going to get some. So that might be kind of a duplicate. You know, okay, well, might be kind of a waste. Well, maybe we take 10000 out of it and what we don't. Or we take the ten thousand, give it an upset in it, and then the rest of it, put it back in towards our police. Uh, yeah, that's our police we, because we are subsidizing. Yeah, we're so we're that. that so we need to fund that. And that would give a little bit less pressure in the general fund to not fund that. Commit the entire amount to funding law the law enforcement shortfall in revenue. Right, yep. and, and I think so. All of it is just yeah. It's all. It's all. I consider upset law enforcement. And then if a resident asks you, what did you do with that marijuana money? I'm just going to say we put it back into the police uh, fund. So when yeah. some issues happen, we have, you know. Yeah, right. that makes the most sense. Our revenue sharing will go up X number of dollars too. each. No. That's okay because I think policing is going up too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey. Wow. So do you have enough information, John, kind of where this is what we what our plan is well, at least I'm, I'm very comfortable with where the, the conversation went I don't know that you had unanimous support tonight but I think all of the things you suggested alleviate some of the concerns that I've been hearing um, regarding road maintenance I don't know that that trustee LaRue agrees 100% with the plan but I think this gets us back on track quicker because it's taking next year's 100000 that we had to come up with for Forest Mill Road and setting it aside from current ARPA money, right? That means we can we can plan on a maintenance project separate from Forest Mill Road next year. Mm -hmm. So we do... And still have the money set aside to do Forest Mill Road when we're ready. Yeah. So and who knows what's going to happen. We yes. have roughly, assuming we don't have to buy an ambulance, we should have roughly... We t if we spend, if we give all the marijuana money back to the sheriff, okay, let's say that the fifty-six thousand that goes away, we take a hundred thousand out for the roads and set that aside. That leaves us two hundred thousand. So that looks like the ambulance, right? We could just figure that's gone. Um, the ninety thousand, then we could start whittling away at some of the CIP projects once we discover what those are. Even, even partially funding them, depending on what it is, um, and commit to getting the handicapped doors. Um, so that's, that's a, looks like that'll be coming next Tuesday. Next week, yeah, so we'll, we can kind of use that, have an, an answer for that. And um, the plumbing. Yeah. And you could figure maybe, I don't know, five to 10,000 to do three buildings, but again, yeah, that gets I, I split four ways. I wouldn't put a number on that yet because these <laughs> the automatic are, fixtures the are, are yeah. can be expensive. That's fine. But the handicap doors and the plumbing can come basically out of the 90000 and then maybe whatever, this is loose, mm -hmm. whatever other um, capital improvement projects could be part of that. And we're not touching fund balance, which is even right. better. Right, right. So Kind of a good plan, sort of. I think it could change. I do agree with that. What I I have a question though. Do we have to con be concerned about the uh, aid to automatic door opening maintenance? 
Is there a maintenance number? Um, that would that would ultimately land on building and grounds. They'd have to deal with any maintenance issues that goes with it. Yes. Well, it might be good to know ahead. Would there be any time they add infrastructure, you have to plan to maintain yeah. it. So would there be a maintenance package on that, like every year that somebody comes and checks all the electrical and equipment? And well, we didn't ask for it, but I'm sure we can talk to them about have, it. They may not do that. You know, you um, might have to do it yourself. The contractor that does it is a UP contractor. Um, their ads have been, you've seen them on TV. Um, they have competition in the UP that had a higher price. Um, I would guess that we could schedule them to come and inspect them every year. Uh, I don't know that it's necessary to do it that frequently <laughs> right away, but we can certainly talk to them about that kind of thing. I'd be careful about signing too many agreements for maintenance contracts because you're going to pay for a lot of stuff that you don't really mm -hmm. need, just especially like on a relatively new building. Sure. Just you're like still going to have to just call like, them if something breaks. Like tired. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I only bring it up as something to be thought about. 100%. If we don't consider the long term maintenance cost of these things, we're not looking at the big picture. Yeah. I think that's a pretty uh, good plan. We get we got a plan and I support it. <coughs> I want to, I want to, one minute to talk when okay. you I have a comment. Go on. ahead, go ahead. I don't want it to be a concern that's related to the Forestville need, but I do want you to know that the people in Huron Woods paid for the roads in Huron Woods when they bought the lot. You, it, it was different than in Trowbridge Park, let's say where the roads were provided by the county. The road improvements that were made, and the people in here in Woods pay a considerable tax. Mm -hmm. They pay a tax that should be recognized when I point out that at no, what, the way that the then road committee took care of here in the woods is they spread gravel and put <laughs> oil and whatever on it. And that was their way of taking a cheap way out of taking care of the roads there. Now the people there all know what the roads look like in front of, say, Pete's house. They got gravel, and it was a little bit of oil or whatever, and that was good till the first snow plow came through and put every bit of that up on the nice lawns that they had on either side of the road. Now, they lived with that. But their greatest concern is, and I'll try to make sure that they don't get too excited about it, is their concern was, we would like that to one day be taken care of. I can tell you that there are potholes in there, in front of Lynn's house, the developer of Jared Woods. There are potholes there. Now, damn it, those people are not brain dead. They, they know what happened in the rest of the community. And they paid, and knew they paid, part of the taxes that paid for that. They willingly did that because they were convinced that it's good for everybody if we take care of the roads. It's a spirit that I support and advocate. But, one day, you're going to have to get back to here in the woods and take care of the potholes. I, I just opened the door to that before a whole lot of money 
is then authorized to fix the road. So, so how, how much is it to fix those potholes? Why, why? And, 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 and keep in mind that in Huron Woods, there's no curbs, there's no drains, right. there's no, it isn't the same as it was in a good part of the rest of the community that got attended to. And I just want you to know that I think that I admire the fact that they were comfortable and willing to wait their turn when I simply said, we don't have the money to do it yet. Well, I guess I, so don't, I, say that, I don't understand that because I drove here on Woods and it's the same kind of road that I have outside my house so in Bishop Woods. If, if I may, that's right. Yeah. And other and other subdivisions are the same. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't that doesn't account for them not being attended to if they need it. Well, that's part of the maintenance mm -hmm. program. That's the idea. Is they go through the whole township and check the PASER ratings. And John already said the road commission is going to do that. They do it every three years, I think he said. Yeah, Something I like think that. they. They I go think through they the rate. whole the entire county. local road network in the county every three years. Yeah. Uh, he's right. As are you, Lynn. Both of your neighborhoods were chip sealed, whereas a majority of the township got asphalt overlays. I think Oak Hills might fall in the same category. The newest roads out there got a chip seal maintenance application because that's what the science dictated. Mm -hmm. But now, we got to keep an eye on them to make sure that they are were ready to do an overlay at the right time right. before we get roads full of potholes. Right. <coughs> Thank you. We yeah, don't, I don't have any that's potholes. what we have in our yard. In our our road is chip sealed in my, in Trowbridge. It's mine is yeah right in front of my yeah it is yeah it has that terrible yeah. gravel. Just on a Cox. short stretch on Cox. Terrible oh. gravel that the kids fell off their bikes and was it's awful. It was but, awful. But wherever wherever they did trip fill, that's what needs they did. to be attended to. Yeah. Is that not what we have right here in Commerce? Yeah, yeah. Fill? I don't they know did some of it. Yeah, yeah the difference is Commerce is a primary road, so we don't have to. Our millage won't pay to repave that. But that's a type is that of road. A chip seal that's a chip seal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we don't have any curbs, and we don't have any drains. No. Yeah, and that's a big part of the up on top of our hill. We don't have any of that. Yeah. They put big curbs in, you know, yeah. in the certain portions. Yeah. But I agree with yeah. you, John. If there are potholes, some, some way we need to have a system where people can report potholes and they can get filled. And Dan, Dan knows how to fill them. <laughs> Let's Let remember, patch. Yes, I do. Patch. <laughs> we don't fill potholes. Right, so they need not, a system on how to report them. They need to call the road commission. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they got cold patch, and that's what mm -hmm. they're going Mine was not cold patch. <laughs> what did you <laughs> I had hot patch. You had yeah. hot patch. Oh, right damn. The, I went right to the plant and got it. Well. I remember you told us that last yes. year. Yeah, but I, I agree. Residents need to know who to call and how to get what. And by the way, for my first attempt at asphalt painting, Did you do good? it survived the winter just fine. <laughs> Probably better than we all did. So my <laughs> So my last comment on the road is when I was walking across Warner Street today, which was reconstructed how many years ago now? It wasn't super no, long ago. Before Ontario. No. I see some pretty big cracks starting in that road. So if they would want that road to survive, they're going to have to do not overlay it, but the, the crack ceiling. Because those I, I are got starting. One, I got a crack in front of my mailboxes yeah, so, that's like this here, all the way across. So John's the absolutely right. The road commission has to come out and do some maintenance mm -hmm. on their roads because Warner Street was totally reconstructed mm -hmm. by our dollars. By our dollars, mm -hmm. and well, the whole but the east half was later than the west half. The west half is the older part, and I saw some significant cracking in it starting. See, we. We've allowed all that. Well, and, and because too, there's heavy trucks going on that. It's a county. Is that a trunk? That's line? a primary. Yeah. Werner in Ontario is a primary road. And what they're doing. So there's so there's heavy trucks on that, which is I think cracking that pavement. No, not necessarily. The We're way. in a freeze thaw region. Yeah. And it's a flexible pavement. Eventually, it loses its flexibility and cracks. 
So you would think with all the very smart people that we have in this country that we would be able to fix some of this, really. Well, well some of it is because Wisconsin roads are great because they let them use the ash, but Michigan won't allow that. So uh, we're <laughs> lo they're looking at adding the glass, the crushed glass. The you can public. drive Wisconsin and yeah, find roads too. exactly like ours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True, but their highways are in better shape. But like I said, if they don't start addressing some of the needs on some of these roads, the county, not us, because it's a county road primary, uh, they're going to start going to get really bad. And then we'll go back to the residents. We residents. didn't get anything from the road committee on a recommendation for projects for the next three to five years. They didn't was... have a quorum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he's sitting by me. So that's Pete right. would and love to give you a list a mile long. Yeah. I guarantee you that. Um, they just need to know what size project they should be recommending every year and everyone needs to remember we agreed this year we had to take a break from doing road maintenance because our staff wasn't trained to put a project together yeah but I'm not I, no they're looking for you know if we want to just look at our millage project and just focus on that they're looking at what other Mowing the, the corridor is a project. You know, they're looking at what things we need to have done by them. I'm not oh, talking about our millage project. You know, what do what do we need to have the road commission work on? Because we're still Crack in high ceiling order. There's one. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. But he out of his committee, they could put something together. You know. Maybe I not. think so. Yeah. I don't think crack ceilings that expensive. No, that so is the most items. affordable option available the next is the chip seal that lynn and john got in their neighborhoods that's and the second and linda and me and, and you i'm sorry I, honestly i didn't know that there were certain roads and trowbridge that were chip sealed but if I'm i go sure back that's to what it is because yeah, it's I'm those rocks all over the kids knees no, it's good. I, I could ask Dave. It's, af it's good after the first winter and they scrape all the rocks yeah, off. Yeah, into <laughs> your yard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either rock or sand. I get sand. It's so. both. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, sorry. Can we, um, you or I suggest to Pete the next time they have a quorum to come up with this list? We, it was a charge that they were given. A motion to us. Yes, from us. If, if we want... What, I need to know specifically what it is, or you're going to have to instruct them yourself. I unfortunately don't know the details of what, what they're being asked to do. The Road Commission is asking all townships to come up with projects for them out of their budget for the next three to five years. Yeah. And Why? I don't consider that because they want to know what they have money. To us. They're not going to do them anyhow. So well, yeah, well, but they need to at least know what what's important. You can <laughs> I'm not talking about our road that. millage. Yeah, that should be that's our responsibility. Well, we can tell them, and then if they don't do it, we'll say, well, we gave you the list. And, yeah. Yeah. and maybe it's just one item for the next five years. I don't know, but he said two or three items for the next three to five years, so they know how to. You know, and like I said, maybe it's just doing the corridor grass. I don't, I don't know. That's I can tell you if things happen in this township like could potentially happen, they're going to have their hands full in the township whether we give them a list or not. Yeah. But that's not to say we shouldn't say these are the concerns we have with our existing road network. Yeah. And I think the list we give them should be associated with the county primaries unless we know something that goes beyond maintenance of the local network. So there shouldn't those yeah. come to the CIP? That, that's a CIP project in my brain. No, we're not responsible for the roads. The CIP stuff is our township. But but we ask each group what they want. Not committee. Not for the CIP for committees though. Oh well. How do we know what they want? Well, yeah, the committees are part Why of that. Why couldn't we ask them what they want? Well, the committees are supposed to go to the planning commission, except for events. You know, the road commission <laughs> or the road Nobody, committee. They don't come. <laughs> Well, I mean, that they're a part of, maybe we need to hand out that organizational chart so everybody yeah. can see. And the planning we, staff is assigned to those committees right. that ultimately yeah. report to the planning commission. Yeah. So, right. it so it's does still happen. coming through planning. They don't, I mean, if they have a request, rec committee, it's part of, you know, either the rec plan or the master plan. It's coming through that way. Hmm. Be nice if there was a form that people had to fill out and then you would have a trail. Oh, we have already done forms. And they, and they don't do a trail. 
Nobody wants to use my form. That's fine. Well, that's why you don't have a trail, and that's why people, yeah, whatever. <laughs> we are going to roll out the 2022 CIP as soon as I can get to it, I promise. <coughs> yeah, you said you were going to work on that. Um, I want to have it done so that when we get to the budget process, we know what we should be trying to fit in the budget. Because mm -hmm. yeah, that's not going to happen until July anyway, because Kim's got to end her book so we can have half a year through June, and then that comes in sometime the end of July. We, she'll it'll, have those It'll numbers. just all work out. It'll just be wonderful. I love your optimism. Don't, Thank you. I, I just told my, yeah, I just told one of the boards I'm on. It just works. And you know what? If it doesn't, yell at me. I'm like old and I don't even care anymore. <laughs> what are they going to do to us? Yeah. Do you well, see them all there? <laughs> we've got one supervisor that's already been recalled this year. Oh, well. So they can get rid of us. Oh, well. well then they'll have to there you then go. Then somebody right else here. will have the, old, the same. Yeah, they're going to be. Yeah, I'm are. going, What? I have to raise the rent again. <laughs> oh, my are we God. good? I'll make a motion and we adjourn. Do I get to do that? Yeah, in a special meeting, you you can. Well, the only motion wrap up is we had a um, we approved the agenda as pre as presented. Okay, for that a motion is okay. Okay, so let, and I'll Anything else? I'll second that that she's okay. motioning to adjourn. good. Till Tuesday, and we're right. adjourned at six sixteen. Linda, as a